Welcome back to Vampire. We've just killed Aloysius Dawson and been kicked out of the Ascalon Club, and now we've just been informed by old Bridget, who came topside just to warn us, that Pembroke Hospital is about to be under attack by something Colum, that asshole with the uh, guard of Prewin. So we gotta run to the hospital and hopefully we can uh, fight them before they come. And I don't come to a murder scene. So let's go there. Oh, 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 hello. Lord Finney. You're not just any Econ, you're a lord. Are you a member of the Ascalon Club? I don't remember. my upgraded claw. So good. Tiny good handle part. 111 shillings. That's a lot of money for one enemy. Yeah, I was feeling like something special might happen on my way back to Pembroke Hospital. I wonder if I'm going to be encountering all the other lords and members of the Ascalon Club and other special enemies like that trying to block my way. Here's another one. London vampires are so weak. Who are you? I don't see your name. Wait, that just, that just did no damage. I think they had maybe that shield thing on. Maybe that's what that effect around them was. That, uh, what is that ability called, actually? Oh, I can't really look at my skills here. Well, whatever, the, the Quen equivalent thing that I got the first level of and then never really used. Yeah, I think they had that. That would explain why it absorbed the entire attack and did no damage. And after I started hitting them a while longer, that particle effect disappeared. Right, I'm not going to bother with these people. Hello, you are Lord Hammersley. It's really interesting that I get to fight all these lords. Very cool. Shadow damage is not the way to go. Let's go with blood and physical. Put for a second, I need your blood. And now you can die. Okay. Now you can die. Alright, Pembroke. Is everyone okay? Is this truck? Are the vampire hunters here already? Motored merchant services. Harvey Fiddick? Okay, that's a good sign. Anyone else? Warner Goswick? Okay. It's looking like we're okay for now. The whole place hasn't been massacred, at least. But the suffering continues. Oh, I need to go upstairs to Swansea, don't I? Yes. Hopefully Swansea is okay. Oh... Oh, that's not a good sign. Those bastards. What have they done to Edgar? No body. They might be alive, just a little bit of blood. Maybe they're just taken hostage. Looks like he's wounded. I better follow the blood. Oh, look at that lighting. Look at that moonlight streaming in from the window. It's intense. Just want to make sure there's no, like... Extra notes left around from last time I was in here. No, let's follow it. I finally get to go to the roof or second floor or whatever's up there. Finally. Yeah, this isn't a roof. It's really odd to me that they've like run out of room for patients, right? Haven't they? But yet they've kept the second floor, which has all sorts of rooms. Completely locked the entire time. It doesn't make any sense, actually. 
I've got the feeling this is going to be a big boss fight. Oh yeah, look at this room. Here we go. We're going to be fighting McCollum. Ultraviolet curtains and Ori Calcum powder. Dr. Swansea's always been a resourceful bastard. I bet he never told you he had this installed in case of a vampire attack. Says a lot about how much he trusts you. What have you done with Edgar? Don't worry. We don't kill humans. Even if your friend is deserving of a little punishment for what. What are you talking about? We know everything. Swansea and you created this bloody epidemic. You aim to unleash another disaster just like William Marshall did. No, I'm trying to put an end to it. Just like you are. You're the progeny, aren't you? Where is the monster hiding? It's still in England, isn't it? I have no idea what you're talking about. Jeffrey, please listen to me. No tricks. That shit won't work on me. We've found proof in the theater. Doris Fletcher was your first experiment. Now where is Marshall? Speak! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so much for modern technology. Time for the tried and true. Do you know what this is, beast? This is a drop of King Arthur's blood. The blood of a true defender of Britain. Stronger than your evil powers. This is ridiculous. We're losing precious time. True enough. Soon I'll bring your head before your coward of a father. Hmm? What you coward of a father? So is this whole thing going to play, like, this whole thing with why I became a vampire, who my maker is, is this going to tie into my father? Is it my father that made me? They're, uh, that, well, yeah, made me a vampire? I found it ironic that this person who leads the Guard of Prewin, all about hunting vampires, just drank blood? It's a very vampiric thing to do. Alright, what are you weak to? No. You are weak. Oh, not weak at all to physical damage, unfortunately. That's not good for me. Um, so, shadow damage and guns. Oh, yeah, let's not be there. Come on, Reed. All right, let's start shooting. Close your eyes. This is going to hurt. Free with prevail. The blood of a true defender of this land will protect. Oh, damn it. Lost my chance. Your poison is Oh, 
You're gonna explode. There you go. We are the guardian of justice. Prewin shall prevail. You can't accept the fact we're not enemies, can you? <laughs> we always have been. And we always will be. Of all the evils that threaten mankind, your kind are the worst. I was only reborn for a few minutes before you and your men hunted me down like a beast. You were only reborn for a few minutes, and you'd already taken the life of an innocent woman. There is no way you'll ever let me be, McCollum. You'll always hunt me down, won't you? There is no escape, Leech. Kill me now, for there is no way you can sway me to your ideals. That's where you're mistaken. What do you mean? Spare you or... Oh, I can turn them. Make them a vampire. What, am I going to force them to drink my blood? Ugh. Uh, hmm. I'd prefer to do neither of these, to be honest. I'd prefer to just kill them. I can't possibly spare them. There's no way. They're such a huge threat to me and people around me. If I make them a vampire, do I really have control over them? I, I'm not super sure on how much control makers have over their progeny. Hmm. Seems kind of cruel. Wouldn't they just hate themselves? Loathe themselves? They would become what they hate? Uh, hmm. Well, I'm not going to spare him, so... I guess we're turning him? Again, I'd prefer to just kill him, but not an option. <laughs> I'll make you a vampire. I'll make you one of us. No! Kill me! <laughs> Prepare yourself, Hunter. You're not to be hunted. Just uh, like me. No! No! When I kissed my uh, uh, goodbye, uh, I had no idea what I was doing. But now I do. Consider this my kiss of Judas. Uh, Dude. Welcome to the world through the looking glass. Don't know how I feel about that. Again, I would have preferred to kill them. It seems... I feel like I'm torturing them for an eternity, basically. But, maybe their outlook will change. Now that they're a vampire. Okay, now what? Rescue Edgar Swansea. Well, of course, but I mean, how do I know where they are? Do I know where they are? Reach Doris Fletcher's theater. How do I know that that's where they are? All right, sure. Well, now that I'm in this unexplored area of the hospital, finally, let me see if my father's letter is here or something. Okay, that's it. That's the entirety of it. Nope, it's not there. What the hell's my father's letter? Oh, hello. Lord, Lord, look, stop moving. Lord Sheffield. I love how I can use claws so frequently, you can just maul them to death. So Prewin never left Doris's theater after they invaded. They must be holding Edgar here in their new headquarters. How do you know any of this, Jonathan? When you... When you made McCollum your progeny, do you, like, download all of their memories? Oh! 
Yeah, there seems to be a bug going on right now where um, all gunshots that enemies make to me and also a lot of their melee attacks don't make any sounds. Report. I just finished reading Doris Fletcher's journal, as painful and dreadful as it was. My god, the woman planned to see everyone in London afflicted by infecting all who would come to her next play. It helped me understand greatly what is going on. Doris Fletcher's real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of some Harriet Jones, who- ah. So they're related. There's something that one of the journals said that made me think they were related, but I don't think I mentioned it. It was just a vague connection, though. I wasn't sure. Uh, she was the daughter of some Harriet Jones, who was being treated as a patient for a long time at the Pembroke Hospital. She clearly hated her mother, but used her fame and notoriety to see her while visiting the poor and sick in the East End. I don't know exactly what happened then, but this is how her mother infected her before returning to the theater. And how she turned into that monstrosity that the leech, known as Jonathan Reed, finally defeated. The presence of that vampire in the same hospital, where Harriet Jones was treated, can't be a coincidence. I'm convinced he is deeply involved with the vampire plague going on in London right now. I'm also convinced Swansea is his accomplice, and that those two are planning something more terrifying than anything the guard has ever faced. Maybe I should take some time to read the old books and manuscripts the guard still possesses to get some answers. It may prove useful. In the meantime, I better send some patrols to investigate about what is occurring at the Pembroke Hospital. And this is two days after. It took me two days to parse through the dusty registers and books we keep in the vault. God, I hate losing time like this. The search did prove fruit fruitful for once. I found two pages that could be related to our present situation and a copy of William Marshall's memoirs. I took them with me to read more carefully. This creature Marshall says he fought in 1666 this disaster that aimed to destroy London. It is very similar to what happened with Doris Fletcher. Disease, infection, hate of the living, a desire to see the city ransacked. I have no doubt now that the bloody old leech of William Marshall is behind all this and that he's back. This could be our greatest accomplishment if the guard could at least find and destroy that old bastard. I believe that Marshall, uh, what Marshall did in 1666 is exactly what Reed is now trying to do. Did the creature, this disaster, escape their will? Is it why Marshall destroyed him in 1666 and Reed did the same with Doris Fletcher before she became such a creature? I don't know, but those two are clearly working together and Swansea is helping them. I will immediately give orders to have him arrested and interrogated. As for Reed, I'll destroy that evil beast myself and then we'll deal with William Marshall and this disaster thing. Prewin will prevail once more. Doris Fletcher was about to become a disaster. I'm getting close to having all the evidence. Somebody just looking over the... Whoa. Oh! You're down in the basement somewhere. How do I get there? Bring an exterminator. Theater stage key. I don't even know where I got that from, but that probably goes downstairs, right? Yeah. Once he is. How do I get in there? Another entrance? A key? 
The Vampire Knight. This is from Carl Eldridge, Prewin Leader. William Marshall. Forget the legend about the man, the one most of you never heard of, you lazy bastards. Forget the empty tomb in Temple Church. Forget the death of those among us who died trying to locate him. We, the guard, know that he is still hiding somewhere. That's the only fact we must keep in mind. Another small detail we need to keep in mind, this little fucker is clever. How many times have we thought we'd cornered him to finally only find old dust and cobwebs? Marshall has been a vampire for a thousand years. We're no match until we change our plans concerning his, his hunt. So, here are a few questions for you, lazy bastards, and I want all of them answered before speaking of another great hunt to pin the leech down. Who helped him escape his den under Temple Church? He has a den under Temple Church? That's gotta be related to those pressure plates, right? Did Usher Taltry hide them? We know now for a fact that a private contractor was paid to move a large coffin from the church a few years before we investigated the tomb. What exactly did the traitors of Brotherhood of St. Paul uh, discuss with Marshall when they meet... What? Wait, what? Grammatically, and this is very confusing. What exactly did the traitors of Brotherhood of St. Paul discuss with Marshall when they meet in 1785 in London? What? The report of this meeting has been burnt, but witnesses remain of a request made by Marshall to access a specific book in their library. Hmm. Is that specific book up? like pull it and it opens a thing kind of lever type thing why does the monstrosity known as lady blackwood seem linked to marshall they exchanged letters she went in london to meet him in 1786 according to the brotherhood spies she tried to discreetly buy his castle in wales in 1793 before fleeing when spotted by her fearless mentor kendall stone see the pattern here what happened during these few years why such agitation and activity? Answer these questions, my brothers, and you will find the path for our most eminent foe, William Marshall, oldest vampire of England, to survive our righteous wrath. William Marshall's Memoirs The Brotherhood of the, S of the St. Paul's Stole finally agreed to meet me in London. They proposed to meet inside the new cathedral of St. Paul. I like the wit and solemnity of these men. What a symbol to choose the place where I defeated this disaster, but also the place where I fell. I agree to their proposition. There, in the sacred silence of the church and under the eye of God, they respectfully listened to me. They acknowledged my victory against this evil creature, the Dus Astro, the Eater of Stars, who only wished to spread death and pestilence all around her. Since they acknowledged my will to save London in 1666, they heard my request, my burning desire to stop the blood of hate. Their primate promised to come back to me with an answer. The primate of St. Paul wrote back to me with just a name, the Tear of Angels. According to him, this ancient artifact could heal anything, cleanse any blackened soul and purify my blood. Blessed be the Lord, it took me more than a hundred years to find a cure for the blood of hate, but I may have finally found it. Soon the raid shall end. Soon I may repair the wrong I did and cleanse my failures. Now all I need to do is retrieve the necessary ingredients to create the artifact. Blood of the purest heart mixed with the blood of a king. To find such rare ingredients is not what worries me the most, for time is on my side. It's the last part that worries me. Pure essence of garlic. I'm afraid it will literally hurt like hell when I drink the antidote. But if that's the price to pay to cleanse my soul and correct my mistakes, I am ready to endure this excruciating pain. Wait, so essence of garlic can hurt them? I thought garlic didn't do anything. Based on what we read. But, but then again, we also read that any sort of like natural substance like plants and leaves would actually hurt them. So maybe, maybe garlic, if ingested, will hurt them a bit? Yeah, they're not mutually exclusive, right? Like saying that you hang garlic over your door to keep out vampires and saying that that doesn't work to ward off vampires isn't the same thing as saying that if a vampire eats garlic, it's not going to hurt like hell. Yeah, so that actually makes sense. They're not mutually exclusive. Blood of a pure heart, garlic, blood of a king. I don't understand. 
Perhaps this is what McCullum drank. I had better keep that in mind. Hmm. Pinned note, evidence safe. Until further notice, this safe will be used to store sensitive evidences. Must always be locked. If you need to access it, just find me on the last floor to get the key. And bloody remember to bring it back to me when you're done. Rodney. The last I should floor. find the key to that box. It's locked. Oh, but did I did I find the key to this in there or ah uh, whatever? Theater basement key. I did. Okay. Edgar. Edgar, can you hear me? Jonathan, is it really you? Easy. Easy. Save your strength. I'm getting you out of here. Don't try to spare me. As a physician, I know all too well when it's too late. Punctured lung, broken ribs, and internal bleeding. An accurate diagnosis, wouldn't you say? Edgar, what happened? They wanted me to confess. Beat me black and blue. Jeffrey McCullum ambushed me at the Pembroke Hospital. He was convinced you and I were responsible for the Skull epidemic. I never imagined that self-righteous fanatic would... Dare to attack us in the open. What b became of him? I put him in a somewhat delicate position when I made him an immortal. Really? Are you sure that was the wisest course of action? Time will tell. The most intriguing part of his accusation was that you and I were the pawns of some ancient vampire. William Marshall. Yes, they... Uh, they tortured me to make me confess the same nonsense. I think you're hiding something, Edgar. What do you mean? William Marshall, for example. You speak of him as if you know him. How is that? Uh, Jonathan, I... I cannot say I'm ready for another round of questions. What can you tell me about William Marshall? Not much. History paints the story he was the greatest knight who ever lived. Amongst the immortals, he had a yet greater legend. Why is the guard of Prewen so obsessed with him? He was the only ancient vampire to escape the first great hunt launched by the guard of Prewen in 1854. They believe he's an evil creature plotting his return. Why would the guard of Prewen believe you and I created the vampire epidemic? Maybe due to our profession? because I offered you shelter at my hospital. While investigating the epidemic, I read some of McCullum's findings. I think you have some explaining to do. I have nothing to hide, Jonathan. Nothing at all. Do you remember when we suspected Sean Hampton of killing Harriet Jones? Yes. A terrible episode that came as a shock to us all. Harriet Jones faked her own death. When I found her in the sewers, she confessed she wanted everybody to pay for what happened to her. That woman was extremely bitter, full of hatred and festering anger. Do you know Doris Fletcher's real name? No, I'm afraid not. Her real name was Doris Jones. She was the daughter of Harriet Jones. 
What do you want me to say, Jonathan? Doris Fletcher visited her mother at the Pembroke Hospital. That's how she first got infected. I know nothing about that. Miss Fletcher once came to visit the sick. That is all I know. No, Edgar, there is more. Doris Fletcher was Harriet Jones's daughter. They exhibited the same symptoms. Blind hate and strong physical mutation. What does this sad story have to do with us? Come on, Edgar. Don't you see the pattern here? The epidemic? The link between Doris and Harriet? The suspicion of McCullum? How could I? I never saw Harriet Jones again after she fled the hospital. Do you know where we are? Doris Fletcher's theater. This is where that hateful creature plotted to spread the epidemic across London. I only briefly met Miss Fletcher once when she visited the Pembroke Hospital. You say it was to see her mother. She seemed like such a sweet and graceful woman. My point exactly. The disease turned her into a bitter soul, driven by vengeance just like her mother, a symptom of all the infected patients. Certain diseases are known to produce similar effects. Rabies, for example. And rabies is not the devil at work. Doris and Harriet shared more than a hidden family bond. They were the embodiment of the epidemic and are linked to the Pembroke Hospital. Come on, Edgar, this is no coincidence. I swear I'm at a complete loss. All I did was administer vampire blood to cure old Harriet. There was no evil plan, no diabolical plot. You did what? I tested the regenerating and healing properties of vampire blood on Harriet Jones. My only intention was to find the cure for influenza, I swear. Whose blood did you use? William Marshall's? Mine? Lady Ashbury's. While transfusing her with human blood, humanely appeasing her hunger, I also kept samples of her blood for my you research. You used her blood on Harriet Jones? My God, Edgar, that's unethical. You betrayed two of your patients at the same time. How dare you judge me? Must I name the alarming list of your victims? We are both deceivers. But at least I know I'm a monster. You have worked beside me. You saw what I'm doing at Pembroke Hospital. Jonathan, you know I'm not an evil soul. Just another victim of this tragedy. Oh, another choice. Before that, though, I'm just wondering why would administering Lady Ashbury's blood cause this infection and cause the physical mutation and turning them into ickers? Why? Shouldn't it just turn them into a vampire? Drinking blood, administering blood should be the same thing. Drinking vampire's blood is how people are turned into vampires. Why? Why that? I mean, I guess it could just be bad luck, basically. Because we know, depending on the, I guess, the character or your lineage of your vampire blood, that determines what your progeny will be like. Like my progeny, assuming they survive the transformation, turn into full, like, full Ekon vampires. And we've heard that uh, Lord Redgrave can only turn people into skulls. So maybe Lady Ashbury just, I mean, an ichor seems like it's sort of an offshoot of a skull, right? Maybe that's just the character of Lady Ashbury's blood and there's nothing special about why it causes that. It's just bad luck. Okay, my choice. Turn them, embrace them, or let them die. That's it? I can't just let them go. I mean, I guess, hmm, maybe I can't let them go because they're so close to death, they'll just die if I let them go. It seems unlikely, though. They're not, they don't seem that bad. It's odd. 
a lot of the choices recently have been kind of odd. Like, okay, I have this choice and this choice, but what about the other choice that seems kind of obvious that I actually want to do? Right, so what Swansky did was horrible, unethical, but certainly they're generally trying to help people and doing a very good job at it for the most part. I don't think they're evil. So I'm not going to let you die. And I'm not going to kill them, so... I guess I'm going to save them. No, Edgar. You are not going to die. Unless you want to. What, what, what do you mean? I can save you, Edgar. I can turn your broken body into one like mine. You truly would? After all I've done, I, after all that's been said, you would offer me this gift? I have no way of knowing which punishment would be worse, Edgar. <laughs> but it is not for me to decide. So? Oh, please, Jonathan, please. I beg you. This is what I've always wanted. This is what I've always searched for. Very well, then. Prepare to die and be reborn. To face an eternity of guilt. I'm ready. Oh, indeed, I am ready. Enough! I wonder how long it takes. Chapter 6, Patient Zero. Destroy Harriet Jones, the source of the Skull's epidemic. Antidote, prepare to fight the disaster. So wait, what's the main quest and what's the specific quest, if that makes any sense? Because you got like the chapter quest and then you have the specific part of the quest you happen to be on. So the overarching thing is to destroy Harry Jones, the source of the Skull's epidemic. But the first thing to do is talk to Lady Ashbury. Okay. I do wonder how long it takes. Minutes? Hours? Days? Old love letter. Wait a minute, I, I haven't read it yet, but it's signed Calhoun. Russell Calhoun, I think it was, the Lone Gourmet. London, 12th of May, 1912, my most exquisite friend. Everything is now ready for our journey to France. We'll leave from Dover on the 17th and we will spend the whole summer in Paris. I can't wait to taste all the delicate flavors that wonderful city has to offer and I can't wait to try them all with you. Music, food, theater, architecture, perfumes, fashion, and you. Oh, what a delight it will be. I already wrote to some of my good artist friends who will be as delighted as me to see you on stage in French theater. Edmund Rustin should be there. I know you like his work very much, and I count on him to introduce us to the magnificent Sarah Bernard. That would be the greatest achievement of this journey. Can't wait to hold you again in my arms, my sweetest delight, and drink again the source of your divine talent. Your devoted Calhoun. Is this for Doris Fletcher? Calhoun used to be a lover of Doris Fletcher. Yeah, new hint available. Huh, interesting. I guess we just need to get the hell out of here, right? Turn at a more convenient time. Is that just your new thing, Jonathan? Do you just say that all the time now? I'm not even near the place where it says I need to return at a more convenient time. Remember that place where I need to find Usher Taltry's journal? Weird. Anyway, uh, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to go talk to Lady Ashbury.